Hello again, friends. I hope you're doing well this week. Let me ask you, has anyone ever called you a nag? Or have you ever had to deal with someone else that you would definitely say is being a nag? Well, no one likes that. I mean, no one likes a nag. And yet, you know what? Sometimes it helps us to be nagged a little bit. Sometimes, if we are nagged in just the right way, it can help us do something that really we probably should have been doing all along. Over the course of the last few weeks, I've been talking with a few families in the church who have confided in me that it has been difficult to shift back to the habit of going to worship in person. We want to be here, they say. It's not that. But I will be the first to admit, they tell me, that it has been harder than I thought it would be to make it happen. I get that. It's hard. We are, after all, creatures of habit, and we form our patterns, and we like to stick to those patterns, sometimes even to our own detriment. That's where being a nag comes in. One way to help yourself change the behavior you want to change is to become that nagging voice to yourself that might push you just enough to enter a new pattern or re-enter an old one. In other words, use your own voice to nag yourself into being the change you are hoping to see and then give yourself the time you need in order to do it. Now don't beat yourself up too much if it doesn't happen right away, but also don't silence that nagging voice in your ears that is reminding you of the change you want to see in your own behavior because of what you believe is important and good and healthy. Sometimes God's best work is accomplished through that little nagging voice that rings in our ears. So nag yourself a little bit this week. Be a nag. And if I happen to see you this Sunday in person, you can let me know that it actually worked. Take care of yourself. And I'll see you again soon.